With that, let us bring in Iowa GOP Senator Chuck Grassley, ranking member of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Thank you so much for being here. Look, Tebow is not the only one who worked for the FBI. Presumably, there are other people who work for the FBI. How has it taken two years for this information to come to light? How did this Timothy Tebow guy conceal this information from Tony Bobolinsky for basically two years now? We wouldn't even know about it if there weren't uh, whistleblowers, very play, uh, patriotic people in the Justice Department that came to me and gave me this information about Tebow. He opens an investigation against Trump based upon very uh, uh, just fuzzy uh, newspaper reporting and then closes down an investigation on Hunter. And at least Ray moved him out of that position and now he's not even in the department. But I think Ray has to do much more to come up with a plan to show that this political bias within the FBI is going to be attacked and uh, rooted out. Well, I, I, can I just say, and I want to just follow up quickly on this. I mean, though, that interview was with Tucker Carlson. I mean, we've kind of known that yeah. Joe Biden was the big guy for two years. Um, it's really shocking. And by the way, we just found out for, through, the, through Trump's speech, um, his rally that he gave this weekend, that the FBI rifled through Baron Trump's bedroom. Where the heck are they in Hunter Biden's? And by the way, this is about him being, uh, Joe Biden being compromised. This isn't even about yeah. the corruption. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, uh, you use the word corruption, and and if there isn't corruption, the way they take care of that is by total transparency, whether it's in regard to uh, the most recent raid in Florida, or whether it's how they treated Hillary Clinton different than Trump, or what they're doing with Tebow, or we have this instance of McCormick. Quaid, a guy by McQuaid, second in the criminal division in DOJ, that was a law partner of Hunter's, and we're trying to find out whether he's recused himself from any uh, investigations and to potential prosecution of Hunter Biden, and nothing seems to be moving. We have that uh, uh, laptop uh, in the uh, Department of Justice and FBI for months and months before anybody knows it existed. And that we're told that uh, there were people said, don't touch the uh, laptop. Are they an enforcement agency or aren't they? Are they using political bias or not? Uh, that's why total transparency is important. The public's business has to be public. Yeah, Senator, mm -hmm. it kind of comes to mind how much smoke before someone pulls the fire alarm, I guess. Uh, listen, moving on, this is the last few months of this Congress to have the opportunity to get legislation passed. I know the midterms are coming up. I know there's going to be a lot of campaigning. Uh, but where is the Senate on getting some things done, either judicial nominees or, you know, it's, it seems like the government shutdown comes around with the holidays every year now. Uh, what, what do you think can be mm -hmm. done with a, such a divided Congress? Well, I think the only thing that's going to get done before now in the election is to fund the government into next year. And it probably won't be fully funded for the 12 months with a continuing resolution being used instead. And I think that's about all we're going to get done during September. Uh, we uh, will be in session probably until October the 10th or 15th. But I don't expect a lot to get done. And that's uh, not a whole lot different than most election years, as you probably know. Understood. Before we let you go, Senator, you're in front of corn. Presumably, you've worked hard throughout your life picking said corn. What is your Labor Day message to other workers out there? We honor the working men and women who, just having a job and supporting yourself and moving this country along is very important. We honor them. I kind of know what they went through because when I was a state legislator meeting every other year and starting a small farming operation, I moonlighted on a uh, uh, assembly line in, in Cedar Falls, Iowa, uh, punching screw holes and furnace registers 
for t uh, 10 years when the legislature wasn't in session. I was a union member. I think I have some understanding of the people that produce uh, and work hard to keep this country going. They're all taxpayers. We need to honor them. I honor them. And uh, they're the backbone of our society. And uh, they deserve much more than what one Labor Day gives them. We need to honor anybody that has a quality job that they enjoy and an opportunity to improve themselves. And this is the day that they should say hi. We should say thank you to them. Senator, the Republican Party, many say, and I agree, is now the party of the working class, the party of men and women. Um, as you described your early childhood in, or your early years of working in the union, um, it's the party of the working class. Talk to me about that transformation. Well, I think it's because the uh, uh, Democratic Party has turned so uh, progressive. And some people see it as socialistic. Uh, the government is the answer to everything. You know, all the brains in this country, uh, people uh, in Washington think, lies there in Washington. Uh, island, uh, Washington is an island surrounded by reality. Uh, the real America is outside of the Beltway, and it's here in the Midwest, in Iowa and other states, uh, where people work hard. They're patriotic. They love America. They don't want to transform America like the Democratic Party wants to do. We want to preserve America. We want to preserve America. Absolutely. I think uh, the party that lands on common sense, common good, and common ground probably will win in the midterms, and it looks like Republicans are putting that message out there. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Senator. Thank you.